Welcome back to Universeo. Today, mass in special relativity. It is quite remarkable that a vast range of physical phenomena can be described using just three fundamental dimensions, space, time, and mass. We already had relative space and time in our previous videos. Attention must now go to the third dimension of the world, which is the mass. Mass makes its mark on your consciousness in two ways. First, Mass is the source of weight, which has to do with gravitational attraction. According to Newton's law of universal gravitation, every mass exerts a gravitational force on every other mass. The gravitational force between two objects is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Second, mass is directly related to inertia, which is the property of an object that resists changes in its state of motion. According to Newton's first law of motion, an object will remain at rest or move in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by a net external force. The greater the mass of an object, the greater its inertia, meaning it requires more force to change its motion. How hard it is to start or stop something depends on both its mass and the desired change in velocity. For example, a heavier car requires more force to decelerate at the same rate as a lighter car. Physicists capture this phenomena in the concept of momentum, which is equal to the mass of the object times its velocity. If you are hit by something, such as a car, it must have mass and relative speed to you. This statement is straightforward, but it will lead to a very profound insight. A notable application of this principle is in solar sails. These large, reflective sails capture photons from the sun, transferring momentum to the sail and propelling the spacecraft forward. If sunlight exerts a force on solar sails, it must carry momentum, which implies that sunlight has mass. If light energy has mass and can be converted into another form of energy, such as the kinetic energy of a car, then this new form of energy must also have mass. Otherwise, mass would disappear. Since all forms of energy can be transformed into one another, we can argue that all energy must possess mass. Until now, our discussion of mass has been based on concepts developed by Newtonian mechanics. Now, let's explore how special relativity comes into play with a thought experiment. Imagine two trains traveling in opposite directions at nearly the speed of light. In one train is Jack, and on the other is his identical twin, Bob. As it sometimes happens, the twins are having a little fight. Jack plans to punch Bob as their trains pass each other. Bob has the same plan for Jack. It takes about 10th of a second for a punch to go from their bodies to full extension. To grasp this, let's describe the motion of Bob's fist by drawing its trajectory on a 2D surface. This trajectory traces out the position of the fist in history, known as its world line. To understand this world line, we first divide it into small intervals with equal length. After selecting one point as the origin, we can number these intervals sequentially, which forms a graduation on the line. When the fist passes a number, its clock advances one tick. The clock of the fist measures the time that governs its internal evolution, known as its proper time. From now on, we use the Greek letter tau to indicate proper time. Imagine Bob's fist is extending towards Jack's face, and Jack is observing this from his train. Surprisingly, Jack sees Bob's punch unfolding in slow motion. This is because Bob is on a train traveling near the speed of light. Due to the time dilation effect, the proper time of Bob's fist is slower than Jack's time. Thus, Jack perceives everything on Bob's train, including his punch, as slowed down. However, since Bob's train is moving in a direction perpendicular to the motion of his fist, the effect of length contraction does not impact the distance the fist travels. Jack observes that Bob's fist takes a longer time to travel the same distance, indicating a slower speed. Jack thinks Bob's slow motion punch has little momentum, while his own punch, moving at normal speed, has a lot of momentum. Jack expects his fist to collide with Bob's and push it back. However, Bob has the opposite perspective. He believes his punch has more momentum than Jack's and expects his fist to push Jack's back. 
when their fists collide, whose expectations will be met? It turns out neither of them can push the other's fist back. It results in a standoff, with the fists meeting with equal but opposite momentum. Jack is very surprised. How could Bob's slow motion fist have as much momentum in it as his? Jack might think that Bob put a stone in his fist to make it heavier. Likewise, Bob could reason that Jack did the same thing. In fact, neither of them had put stones in their fist. However, the fists acted as if they became heavier. Motion affects mass, which is a relativistic effect, just as time dilation and length contraction. It causes the measured mass of an object to increase as its speed increases. In order to maintain the momentum unchanged, the mass of Bob's fist must increase by the same factor that its proper time slows down. That is, the longer the time you measure to be required for the punch to arrive, the greater will be the measured mass of the fist. You might think that the measured dynamic mass of an object strictly ties to its speed, but that's not always the case. Consider a sealed box with a coiled spring and a flywheel inside. When you let the spring uncoil, it sets the flywheel spinning. The spinning flywheel must have more mass than when it was stationary. But where did this extra mass come from? How did it get into the sealed box? There is actually no mass entering the box. The mass inside the box remains constant. The spinning flywheel indeed has more mass than the stationary wheel, and the mass must have come from the spring. Even though the coiled spring is stationary, it has more mass because of its higher potential energy. When the spring uncoils, mass is transferred from the spring to the flywheel via energy. Mass is tied to energy, thus the total mass inside the box remains unchanged. The flywheel gains kinetic energy and mass from the spring, meaning that a wound up spring weighs more than an unwound one. Winding a spring doesn't add speed or momentum, only energy. Therefore, it's the addition of energy, not speed or momentum, that is responsible for the added mass. Now that we've explored the connection between mass, energy, and relativity, but how much does energy weigh? We will answer those questions in our next video. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you enjoyed this video, please leave comments and subscribe to this channel. See you next time as we continue to explore the wonders of physics and the universe.